This pendant is the standard pendant that most users get for the Onefinity Elite Series CMC. It's the official one that Masso sells and supports. I wasn't really interested in a wired pendant, so I looked into other options and came across this WIXHC company out of China. And uh, this is specifically the one that they recommended to use. Uh, it's got a metal encoder, 100 points per revolution. You use the enable button on either side when you turn it so it moves. Otherwise, it doesn't move, so it can't move accidentally. You've got the axis switch that select your up to six axes, which we would only use up to four. The magnification switch, e-stop, and three auxiliary bus buttons that can be used for various different functions. Uh, it also has a magnet on the back, so if you have a steel table, you can stick it directly to that. This is the wire I picked up to connect to it from Amazon. I picked the multicolored one to make the pinout easier to figure out for myself. Uh, the controller it comes with, this is the wireless controller. This is pretty much the only instructions you get with it. And he sent me an email with a basic diagram also, but it's pretty much similar to this. Um, there's a jumper on here that I moved to 24 volt instead of 5 volt. And the wiring I did like this. I color coded it the same as that ribbon cable that I got off of Amazon. I ended up just cutting off the female end of this using the male end only. I used a continuity tester on my multimeter to figure out which pin was which. I decided not to use the the VE and the VE positive and negative through the pins and we don't use the B axis so and there's a few other ones that just aren't used to reduce the number of those cables. It was pretty straightforward to hook up though. The Y goes to Y, X goes to X, Z goes to Z, A goes to A. We don't use the B so we just took that out of there. I use the e-stop, which hooks up into the EST1 through EST4, or you could use EST2 through EST3. It's a dual switch. Um, the MPG is a non-differential system, so it only uses the two connectors, which go to pin 28, A+, and pin 27, B+. The resolution selectors go to the or straightforward as it is resolution one it shows right here resolution one on pin uh five is x1 so x1 x10 x100 just all lined up to the x1 x10 x100 on the controller uh, for the buttons you have three buttons which are the minus plus and little sine wave button right now i only have one of them hooked up to Test it out and it worked just fine. I have that hooked up to pin 18 on the inputs with a pull-up resistor that is rated at 5.6 kilo ohms. Um, and what else had to be done? The emergency stop, the way it comes from the factory, is has a black and a green wire hooked up into e-stop 2 right here. Um, and you have to unhook the black and move it into e-stop 1 but leave the green in e-stop 2. Uh, with that configuration, both e-stops work. The one on the touch, G3 touch, right on the front of the controller, and one on the pendant. To power it, I didn't run it through these pins. I hooked them directly up to the main connections on the G3 touch. So I ran a power line from there into pin 30 and a ground line from the ground into pin 29. Uh, it also wants you to earth the entire wireless device. I couldn't find a place to earth it on the Maso G3 Touch. There wasn't a single connector there that was grounded. So I ran a wire from the wireless connector out the back of the Maso G3 down to the power supply connector and to one of the screws on the body. And then I tested the connection from the ground connection all the way through to the ground or the ground pin connection on the back of the power supply box from Onefinity to the ground connection on the wireless controller for continuity and it works. So everything is grounded. 
And I believe that is it. So I could take you out to the garage and we can go from there. I'll show you how it's hooked up. Here I am at the machine. I've got the Maso G3 Touch opened. This is the wireless receiver got wired up. Up here is the power section. Um, I've got the positive and negative with the red and black wire hooked up to the positive and negative on the Maso up here. Um, this green cable, darker green cable, is a earth cable. I've got this one running down through the back of the Maso uh, down to this uh, screw on the body and I've chested that. That is earthed. It is bonded to the ground. Um, the signal cables are all here. They all go up through this ribbon cable um, that, which is wired like the diagram I showed. Uh, the button input is this yellow and black. The black is the common for all three buttons. I only have one button wired right now. It is wired into input 18 with a 5K resistor um, uh, to the other one as a pull-up resistor. The common for the uh, these buttons, or sort of the resolution and the X, Y, Z is this red cable, which goes up to the 24 volt. The black one is the common for those ones, I already talked about that. The MPG is here also. This is well, metal, metal. This is probably some sort of plastic, but it feels pretty robust. To operate it, you push a button on the side to make this thing work. Otherwise, you spin it, does nothing. Safety feature. Uh, you do your axis selection with these, which also turns the power on. Uh, you can use the e-stop or the resolution selection here, X100 one so let's put it there and uh, these buttons could be used for various different things like I said I only have the one hooked up to input 18 um, so I'll close it up and uh, see it put to use okay one of the things I've noticed is this will not fit in here with this on it uh, but there's four screws on the back and I can remove those then, oops sorry then it will fit into here and with the wires all tucked in it closes up Something's pressed again, but it does definitely close up. Let's see the wire right there. Um, so I'll boot it up. Get this out of the way. Uh, one of the features that's nice about the MPG is it's magnetic, so you can just stick it on and pull it off. Uh, when you have the power on, if you have the emergency stop to be hit, you can use that, but to show this works, so I'll use this one, alarm off, alarm on, and then I have this used as my home button, so push that, machine starts homing. Okay, now that it's homed, I'll demonstrate how it works. You select your axes with this, push the button on the side, move it. Move the Z, move it down, up. Smaller resolution, go to fine. You can just turn one step at a time, which I believe is one thousandth of an inch. And on the Z and on the hat or on the X and the Y, it's half a thousandth. Mm -hmm. 
very fine. Um, you can demonstrate there the emergency stop button again. Pull that, hit the home. That's pretty much it.